Okay, so now let me go through one more example. Um, we're going to skip example three because this is running, uh, the lecture is running a little bit long. But what this example corresponds to is this um, basic system that I put together when we're covering how to use windmill program earlier this semester. And what I've done on here is I've added a generator in here to represent the PV. And so anyway, we've got these basic elements in the circuit right here. Um, I don't have a substation regulator. I've got a downstream regulator. And what I'm doing in this case is I've got this bus regulated. So if we're really gonna do this right, we probably ought to add like a regulator upstream here, but let's just stick with this example that we built in the previous class. So these are the various circuit parameters and I'm gonna go ahead and up put the circuit up on the Moodle side as well, if you wanted to duplicate what I'm talking about here, but we've got the parameters for the source. Note this, there's a source impedance. I've got the transformer in the circuit. I've got a capacitor, I've got loads. I've also put a generator in, which is set up as a negative load model. And this is just set up for 500 at a kind of a high power factor right here. Um, got all the conductor information, everything else loaded into this model. So as far as getting this set up where I can run OpenDSS based on this, this would be very, very tedious to type in by hand in OpenDSS. Um, so the better way of doing this is use the capability in Windmill to do an export. And what Windmill is going to do, it's basically not only going to create the master file, but it's going to create all these circuit files, as we'll see. Now there's a few modifications that we need to make to this and I'll talk about these modifications, but for the most part, it's almost ready to run. And then we could just run the model and we can look at some of the results. And so you go to file, export, you select open DSS option, hit next. It'll ask you for a path name for the file, then you hit finish. And what this does is it creates a number of these different text files as well as this CSV file that has the node coordinates in it. This node coordinates would be used for doing different types of maps and plots of the circuit topology. But you see for each of the different element types, what you have is you have a file generated. So the key thing in here is the master file. The master file defines a new circuit it calls all the other circuit element files. And then if you want to have some show commands where you show certain types of variables or you export this to a spreadsheet, you can put this into the master. And again, what I would recommend is you have one more file on top of this called like a run case file, let's say, where you call the master file. So you don't keep manipulating the master file. You just simply would do the top, make the changes in the top level file. But, but anyway, uh, you got the master file and you have all these different circuit element files. So this is what the master file would look like once we clean it up a little bit. And again, you're creating the new circuit. We start off by clearing the distribution system simulator um, memory. And then you basically pull all these files in. That's what redirect means. It basically would just simply suck all these files in and all the content in the files. Then you can do some basic settings. There's a lot of things you could set within OpenDSS if you look at the help documentation, but mostly you stick with the defaults. And then you have to also set the foldage basis. And then what, um, Millsoft's doing when it, you export the file, it, it actually pulls, you know, what voltage bases it knows of into this particular file. Um, and then you could set specific um, bases for, for nodes in the circuit. And again, what the calc V is for, it, it's, it's sort of a voltage calculation that you do for kind of setting up the bus list. And then what you can do is you could solve. Show command, all that does is you have certain default shows set up where you can show voltages, powers, currents. 
If you look at the documentation, there's other sort of shows you could do. What that does is it just simply pops up a text display. And then if you do an export, what export does is it sends this information to a CSV file where you can pull it up in Excel. Uh, and so shows okay. I mean, if you want to just look at something really quick, but usually if you're going to do reports, you're going to want to put this stuff in Excel format. And then if you did want to plot the circuit out, you, you can plot things out, but normally I don't really use this very much. So just, let's just kind of walk through the different sort of things that get set up in this particular circuit. So first of all, we got to get our source defined. Our source is the slack bus for the circuit, sometimes referred to as the infinite bus. And again, what we do is we clear the circuit out first or clear the, the DSS memory out first. And then we define a new circuit called source one. And then since that already has like a default definition for the, the voltage source, what we do is we edit the source. And then uh, what we can do is we can declare, you know, what's the internal bus and what's the voltage and what's the base KV and we could define the internal impedances. And again, this would just be all available in the export. So you don't have to actually type this in, but it would actually be in the vsource.dss file. One thing you have to watch out for in OpenDSS is, let's suppose you didn't find any source impedance. OpenDSS requires that you have something entered. It can't be zero. And so if for some reason you're putting a source in the circuit that has no impedance, just simply go into this file and just put some nominal value of positive and zero sequence impedance, like I've got shown right here, because otherwise it'll, it won't run. Then you have the transformer information that's split up between the transformer file and the regulator control file. For the transformer in the substation, then you're basically defining the high and the low winding data. You also have the X to R ratio. For the regulator that's downstream, um, we've got something that's kind of similar, but since this is a auto transformer, the, the data looks a little bit different. Note that um, you basically have the same voltage rating on both sides. And then what you define in the case of a regulator would be the number of taps, the max tap and the min tap. Now, the reason this number is so high is because in windmill, you chose infinite taps. And so what the conversion does is it basically says, well, we'll give you a thousand taps and then that'll give you enough resolution where essentially it looks like an infinite. And then when you come up with the regulator control, if this is for the infinite tap case, note what it does is you have the regulator voltage set point. But then what it does, it sets the bandwidth to a very, very, very small value. Because in this case, if you have infinite taps, essentially the bandwidth's almost zero. Uh, and so anyway, this is done automatically for you in the export process. And there's another thing, I, a comment I need to make about the source bulge regulation, but let's leave that until the end. So we have our overhead lines. Um, Basically, what you're going to have is you're going to have the impedance matrices dumped out from Millsoft um, into OpenDSS line code format. And so basically what you would do in this case is you would have um, line code, say like with your uh, 477 size conductor. And what this is going to do is going to dump out the matrix information for the resistance, the reactance, and also the, the capacitance. So this is what this looks like in Millsoft. And then what it does is it just simply puts it into this compressed format that you could use. And then when you define line segments, like line segment overhead zero, you define this as a new line. Um, bus one is connected up to TR1 up to the transformer at the substation. Bus two, we're just going to call that overhead zero. 
and then you get the, the line length in here, uh, and then you link this up to the line code for pulling in the impedance information. Something else you would you could do too is you could also, I don't know if I have that here, but you, you also have the conductor information. And again, what you need the conductor information for is you need that for the line ampacities to set percent, to get percent capacity. Um, for the cable, then what you would define um, for, for different line codes, again, you would, you would go ahead and you would have like the matrix information in here. And then if you define a new cable, then what this does is this references the line code. And again, this is automated in the export. And, and again, what you'd have to do if you wanted to get ampacity in here that you'd have to actually put in some conductor information to get that. Okay, so for capacitors, um, basically we're going to have a new capacitor. This is going to be a 900 K bar capacitor, 12.47 KV. And then for the generator in this case, I'm going to define a new generator. Um, it's going to be re referred to by name as PV gen. Um, I'm going to just kind of specify it's going to have like three phases associated with three nodes. And then it's going to have a power output of 500 kW at a power factor of 0.95. For the loads, again, we can, we can apply a zip model in this case, although most of the time we've been assuming these are constant kVA. So again, I've got a, a load in this case. We're going to call this consumer one uh, underscore A phase. Um, Basically, just to note the fact that it's a single phase load, so it's just connected up to one node. So number of phases is one. Uh, and then this has the kilowatt and the K bar value associated with this. And then it has the model type in here, which gets into like what type of a zip configuration is it? So if you go to DSS help, this will have some more documentation about what some of these names stand for. So anyway, once you have this all um, exported, then what you can do is you can, you can run this in OpenDSS. So what you would do is you would, you would go to file and you would open up the master.dss file. And what this does is if this gets displayed in the main window. You could either click this compile button to run it you can go to file, compile, select the master DSS file and run it that way. But the way I normally just do it, I just select all the lines on the screen and you can right click and compile it or you can just hit control D and it'll, it'll run. So anyway, this just shows like a, a simple plot that you get. Um, I'm not going to show all the individual screens in this case. It's kind of hard to walk through them, but I just wanted to kind of show you some of the results you get from OpenDSS and that indeed matches up with, with Windmill. So uh, a few comments I wanted to make about this. When you export the master file, what Windmill does is it puts a lot of other stuff into the master file, which you probably want to delete. Like it puts a little template in here for doing a load flow, which we want, but it puts another template in here for doing fault analysis, which we don't need. So then you could just delete this right here. And then I, I usually like exporting some stuff into spreadsheets. And so you can just add this in manually. And then one thing um, about the source model that we have in this particular circuit is in commercial power flows, what you can do is you can regulate the output at some bus using, say, like a source model. And so this would be an example where I want to start at the top of the feed or I have the source model in there. I could still have some source impedance, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm regulating the voltage output. 
So what the source model is kind of doing is it's kind of representing the fact that you have some sort of a line tap changer at the substation. OpenDSS doesn't do that. OpenDSS, if you want to regulate the voltage at the bus, you need to have a regulator there. That's, that's all there is to it. And so what the export windmill does is it creates a dummy regulator, which it calls fake regulator. And what it does is it sets the impedance to it to a very, very small value. And then if you're um, having like an infinite regulation capability this source, what it does is sets the taps to a really, really high value. And so it's like you have an ideal voltage control there, um, basically an ideal boost if you want to think about that way, and it's just simply called fake regulator. And so this is, you know, these are the real regulator components that we actually had in the circuit. But again, in order to model this in OpenDSS, OpenDSS has to put a fake regulator, a dummy regulator into the circuit. So this would actually be part of the export right here. You don't need to add that. Now, the other thing you, you have to kind of watch out for, is, as I mentioned before, is now what you're gonna have in your regulator control file is you're gonna have something in here for controlling that fake regulator. So there'll be a fake regulator control. In this case, it's holding the voltage to 124 volts on 120 volt base. The other thing, as I mentioned before, that you saw that it, gave you a regulator with a lot of taps for the downstream regulator that had a really, really small bandwidth. And if you look in the original data, it had two volts for the bandwidth, but the problem is if we have the infinite option checked, then it's gonna give us a large number of taps which are with a small bandwidth. So a couple ways you can do to fix this, one would be when you do, after you do the export, you can change these values directly. Or what you can do is before you do the export, go to your reg to the voltage drop settings and choose regulator step. And then what that'll do is that'll export the actual parameters in. And so in this case, when we um, when we do this right here, you see what it's going to do. It's going to set the number of taps to 32. So it's 16 taps up, 16 taps down. And then the new regulator control you see indeed has a bandwidth of two. And so if you don't want the infinite taps, generally, you know, when we're doing the quasi-static analysis, we typically want to see how this actually working in the field. So you would probably want to go to your voltage drop settings, choose step for the regulation. So it gives you the actual um, control parameters that you would actually see in the real device. Uh, again, for the OpenDSS results, what you can do is you could use show to create text files. But again, I like using the export command because what the export command is going to do is just going to put this stuff into a nicer spreadsheet format where you can manipulate the data. Um, so anyway, this kind of shows you the, the types of outputs you have as far as text files, a mix of text files and CSV files. CSV stands for comma separated variables. And then you can, you can go through the manual and you, you, can, you can get more detail in the manual, but the, there's a really good help um, in OpenDSS. So go to the help screen in OpenDSS and what it does is it gives you this index of all the different commands and the variables and stuff. And then what you could do is you can go ahead and just type in the particular keyword, and then that'll lead you to the documentation. So normally I don't go leafing through the manual. Normally I just use the OpenDSS help and then I get you know additional information on how to use each object or how, you know, what's what are the options in the export commands and stuff like that. So, so anyway, just to kind of to wrap this up, um, what we're going to do in the next lecture is I'm going to 
getting some more examples of the quasi-static analysis. I'm going to leave that to the next lecture because we're going to kind of go through how we do some of this PV analysis in Windmill and in OpenDSS. Um, and we could do some of this stuff in Windmill. I mean, we certainly could run to discrete cases and we like for the homework eight, you know, we, I kind of went through in the, in the online lecture, how we can use Windmill to kind of do a flicker analysis, but that's pretty tedious. And the other thing too, is a lot of times when you have changes in cloud cover, it's kind of variable and has a certain pattern to it. And it's really hard to duplicate that in Windmill. And so this is, this is kind of where a lot of people are using OpenDSS and the quasi-static time series analysis. This is finding its way into the commercial tools, unfortunately. Uh, this is a lot of times a, an extra expense add-on. And so if you're using a program like SIME and you have the base license, then you have to pay to get the quasi-static analysis and you have to pay extra to get the scripting ability and it, and it adds a lot to the license expense which is why a lot of people are using OpenDSS. So instead of running one snapshot after another, you know, what, what OpenDSS does, it gives you a lot of build and support for doing the time series analysis, makes it a lot more convenient. And then what we actually would do then is we would run certain sample days or we would run over the whole year. And it just kind of makes it easy to, to look at the performance and figure out, you know, where are the corner cases and things like that, that we, we have to be focused on. Uh, for references, again, I, I showed you the, the SourceForge link. You could also go up to the EPRI site. They would have a similar type of a download. Um, there's two main manuals there's the manual that describes everything and there's also a primer manual. Basically what I've done in this lecture is pulled a lot of the stuff out of the primer manual, but if you're really interested in this, you might wanna take a look at the primer manual. And then the other thing is that there is a graphics version of OpenDSS being developed. Unfortunately, it's, it's a rather cumbersome interface. It, it might have its application uh, it supports actually parallel processing right now, so it's got a lot of potential uses in the future. But there's a lot of lot of overhead associated with using this G version, and so this is why I'm not using it for class. I don't think it actually makes it that much easier, given that you can enter the your circuit data in Windmill and convert it. Um, and so maybe, you know, maybe in a couple of years, it'll get to this, the point where it will give you same, the, the same functionality as Windmill, but it's not, it's not quite there yet. All right. So anyway, we spent quite a bit of time um, going through an examples and we'll go through some more quasi-static examples. And I'll kind of keep doing examples and classes needed. Um, and it, it might seem you know, it's, it's a real stretch right now to learn how to use this, but I think once you get started using it, um, you'll see a lot of advantage to, to using something like this as opposed to a snapshot only type of tool.